Good morning and welcome to worship with our Ebenezer community. My name is Chris Beckman. I am the corporate chaplain for all of Ebenezer. If you're watching this video, you might be part of one of our families of communities. We go all the way from Grand Marais up in the north to Des Moines, Iowa in the south. We're glad you're watching with us and we hope you enjoy this worshiping opportunity for us and for our community. Today we continue our journey through the season of Advent and we prepare ourselves in heart and mind and soul for the coming again of the Christ child into our world. Let's begin our worship with our opening hymn, O Holy Night. Please join along in singing together the great carol, O Holy Night. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, He. Christ was born, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night Let us now continue our worship with the Advent Litany, and I invite you, the congregation, to respond with the bold portions of the liturgy. Blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks for peace. Peace for all people and for his friends, and those who turn their hearts to him. God's help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will live in our land. Blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us now pray together the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson for this third Sunday of Advent is from the book of Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the gospel reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. We continue our journey through this season of Advent, the four Sundays that lead up to the celebration of Christmas and the coming again of the Christ child into our world. One of my favorite Advent traditions that you may know about is celebrating St. Nicholas Day. It is one of my favorite traditions, and it's one that is becoming more and more celebrated in our world and especially in places like Holland and in Germany. Some of you probably already know that St. Nicholas was a real person. He was a Christian bishop from the 4th century, and he lived and died in a place that was close to modern-day Turkey. Nicholas was known for his generosity, and that spirit of generosity has infused the spirit especially St. Nicholas Day. The Dutch, who loved Sinterklaas, that's what they called St. Nicholas, Sinterklaas, brought this tradition of celebrating St. Nicholas Day to this new world when they came. And as has with so many things, when something from a foreign tongue eventually becomes part of the English and American language, that Sinterklaas, St. Nicholas, the 4th century Christian bishop, as people began to say again and again, Sinterklaas, Sinterklaas. Maybe you can even hear that the words eventually become Santa Claus. So the origins of jolly old Saint Nick, of Santa Claus, actually have their origins in the Christian church and their origins in a 4th century bishop somewhere in Myra in modern day Turkey. I learned about this tradition when I was a graduate student living in Heidelberg, West Germany. And I say West Germany because it was 1989 that I was living there. It was the year that the Berlin Wall fell. It was hard to find a place to live in Germany, but we eventually landed a chance to be an au pair for two small German boys. So we paid for our rent by doing some light housekeeping and taking care of these two small boys. And I can remember so distinctly learning about this tradition of St. Nicholas Day. It was December the 5th, and that night I watched as these little two boys that we took care of put out their shoes outside the front door. And I asked them what they were doing. And they said, and they looked at me as though I was the dumbest person possible. They said, if we are good, St. Nicholas will come tomorrow and fill our boots with toys and treats and candies. One of the first lessons that you need to learn about celebrating St. Nicholas Day is always choose the largest boot 
or shoe that you have. I can only imagine and you can only envision what it was like to watch as two small German boys celebrating their first St. Nicholas Day that they could remember, getting up at the crack of dawn on December the 6th, rushing to the front door and looking outside into their boots. And what they found in their boots were chocolates and these gold foil coins that you will probably see in the grocery stores now. And they were geld to remind us of the generosity of St. Nicholas, who has this history of giving to the poor and those in need. And of course, always at the top of the boot that was filled with these gold coins and chocolates and little small toys was an orange. Somehow that tradition of savoring an orange that comes from years ago when oranges was such a rare treat was still part of this St. Nicholas tradition. Why is this important? Why would we say that celebrating St. Nicholas Day is an important part of our Advent tradition? For some, it starts the season of Christmas and Advent and Epiphany a little early. How fun when my boys get to celebrate St. Nicholas Day on December the 6th and get a bit of a taste of what's going to come with Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But I think it's mostly about the gift of generosity, of giving in abundance. You see, we are preparing during this season of Advent to be aware of and live into the generosity of our Christian faith and hope. You see, God is about to give of God's self again, fully into this world. The incarnation of God being fully present in heart and mind and soul, in the midst of God's people, and wrapped around us and within us in our lives and our hopes. It is this grace, it is this generosity, that celebrating even something as simple as St. Nicholas Day, a Christian bishop who followed in the foots of generations of people, following in the footsteps of Jesus, to give of himself fully and graciously and generously. I don't know if my kids are getting it yet, but when I teach them about St. Nicholas Day, it's not about the candies in their boots. It's not about the little toys or trinkets. It's not even about the orange. It's about teaching them about generosity and abundance and the giving of ourselves and the grace that comes to us by being the people of God and following in the footsteps of Jesus. One of my favorite examples of this was when I used to be the chaplain on the Ridges campus down in Burnsville. And I think they may still do this tradition because on the Ridges campus there are 56 kids in daycare who are immersed in our community. You may have children in your community that are around and part of our Ebenezer family. Well, there are 56 kids on Burnsville campus, and they go all the way from six weeks old up to five years of age. And we used to celebrate St. Nicholas Day with them as a way to teach abundance and generosity. And so we would bring the kids with us into worship every Wednesday, closest day to December 6th. And I would dress up like St. Nicholas myself. I'd put on a bishop's mitre and I'd have a cope on and stole. And I would tell them the story of St. Nicholas and his generous giving to the poor. And then I would tell them that when they go to take their nap, I want them to put out their shoes and boots and see if St. Nicholas might come to visit. Well, if you can imagine a sight of two and three and four-year-old kids putting their shoes outside in the hallway as they went to take their nap. They were awfully small, but after nap time, the adult day center, the seniors there would sneak in. <laughs> I don't know how well we sneaked in, but we would come in with our walkers and our wheelchairs 
And we would fill the little kids' shoes with chocolate coins and candies and a tangerine in memory of the orange and the generous giving that transcends generations. It was one of these wonderful traditions of inviting young people into a life of generosity and hope. It is an invitation to telling again the story of Jesus coming into this world, the great gift of God himself to us, of being present in our life and our world. So these little trinkets of chocolate coins and candies and even a tangerine are but a way for us to tell and retell again the story that this time of Advent, as we remember the example of St. Nicholas, as we remember the example of all those who give generously, that ultimately it begins with the gift of God, gifting to us the incarnation of Jesus himself coming into this world in heart and mind and soul to share with us now and all the days of our lives. Amen. Please join us now as we sing together our Advent hymn, The First Noel. Please join us as we sing together The First Noel. confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, guide the nations of this world into ways of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O God, we pray that the Spirit may move every human heart, that the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created all people in your image. We thank you for the astonishing variety of races and cultures in our world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves, and a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, look with mercy upon the people in this land, who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Help us to eliminate cruelty to these, our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open your hearts now to God and receive the blessing. May Almighty God bless and protect you against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of His Son, God granted us healing. May He fulfill His promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. And now may Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We want to thank you for joining us for our worship during this Advent season as we prepare our homes and our communities and our world for the coming again of the Christ child into our world, into our hearts, into our families, and into our communities. Let us now sing our closing carol on this third Sunday of Advent. Good Christian friends rejoice. Please join us as we sing our closing hymn, Good Christian friends rejoice. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today, Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss, Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this.